what's going on on my non-sport trading card fans? It's your boy Retro Hero back doing another non-sport trading card show and tell. This one's number 110. In today's episode, as I alluded to in my last video, I wanted to discuss the last two months on eBay. I started an eBay store 58 days ago today. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what it took to start the store, what I'm selling, why am I selling it, what does eBay charge you to sell your items. All of these questions will be answered in today's episode. In addition, of course, we're going to do a show and tell what has made its way to the Retro Hero Collection. Big, big shout out goes to my buddy. Cash's Treasures, I had to do it, Robert, I'm sorry. Uh, Cash's Treasures hooked me up with a really cool auction, and I cursed him and still want to give him a hug at the same time for all these items that have made their way to my collection. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. In the meantime, why don't you sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. <laughs> Hi and welcome back. So let's get started first with show and tell. Uh, I'm always excited to show off what has made its way to my collection. Uh, we're going to start with some pretty sweet boxes. But before we do, so here is the short version of the story. Robert Cash, Cash's Treasure, shout out to his 1,000 subscriber giveaway. If you're not a subscriber to Cash's Treasures, make sure you check him out. Robert messaged me and he's like, hey, there is a Roxanne Tozer auction going on and uh, you need to get involved in it. I said, Robert, are, is, is Roxanne charging Roxanne Tozer uh, prices? Because I can't afford that stuff. And he's like, no, man, it's an auction. Go and bid whatever you think. And I said, okay. He sent me the link. I wasn't even going to check it out. I'll be honest. I don't need stuff. I, I am completely out of room. I'm looking at my collection shelf thinking, I, it's it's such a mess. I, I don't know what to do with all this stuff right now. So, uh, But I did. I checked out the auction and uh, I, I was really surprised. Now, it was early on in the auction, but uh, I was surprised how many uh, not items didn't even have bids on them. Uh, there were so many great deals to be had in this auction. So I placed some minimum bids and then I let it go. And throughout the, uh, the week or so, maybe it was nine days. I occasionally got a message saying I was outbid on an item here or there, but, uh, I bid on so many items that, uh, I was like, wow, I, I, I don't want to win $1,500 worth of stuff. Um, I really hope people start to bid. Well, fast forward to essentially the last day of the auction and the bid started coming in. I, I did get caught up here or there with a few items, but uh, I don't think I really overpaid for anything except for, for maybe one item. I just didn't do my research. But uh, anyway, so let's let's get into what came in from the, the auction. Uh, first, we're going to start. Um, I do have some packs of these, but uh, what I did not have was a complete box um, of terrorist attacks. Now, Milo at Trading Cards opened up one of these packs. I've never opened them up. I, I know that they are depictions of, ter of terror attacks or terrorists throughout the United States history. Um, done by Piedmont, I believe it's like 1986 or 88 or 89. It says 86 on the box. So, um, but I I picked this up for you know less than thirty dollars, and I thought that was a really good deal. The box is in great condition. Uh, just take a look at the packs. The packs look nice and sealed. They of course don't have any gum in them. So I I uh, thought this was a really welcome addition to my collection. Um, something that uh, doesn't go on my eBay store because I, you know, I've always wanted this. This is kind of a, a nice little historical piece, and uh, normally these things go for I don't know, maybe uh, around eighty to a hundred, hundred plus on eBay. So I thought I, I picked this up at a pretty good price. Um, yeah, and and that is a welcome addition to the collection. We'll set that aside. Piedmont Terrace Attacks. 
All right, let's let's grab a few other things. Now, this is something I bought 100% strictly for my collection. Um, it just happens to be a BBC exchange, the baseball card exchange wrapped. Uh, but uh, regardless, I'd never open it anyway. Um, Beetlejuice, now, a good movie. Uh, you know, funny story, Beetlejuice is pretty nostalgic for me. Um, the time this movie came out, I was a teenager, and I was in the age where I was driving and and uh, dating uh, young ladies. Anyone that would say yes, pretty much. Uh, and uh, so I probably saw this movie, I, I don't want to exaggerate, no less than six times with five different girls. <laughs> Everyone wanted to go see this movie. Man, I was so bored by the fourth time I watched this movie. Um, and then, of course, they came out with the cartoon. I, I vaguely remember the cartoon. I, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was good. It, it was a good movie. But uh, um, I did not have a complete box of this. I, I do have some packs here and there. What's neat about this is as you open it up, the set itself has uh, glow-in-the-dark cards, which I, I thought is pretty cool. But this is uh, wrapped by the BBC Exchange. It did come from the Roxanne Tozer collection. And uh, I picked this up for a steal. It was less than, than $38, I believe, all in. And that includes the auction surcharge. So dark cards, dark flip cards, Beetlejuice, uh, wrapped by the BBC Exchange. Um, all in, I guess, right around 40 bucks, And uh, a really welcome addition to my collection. That'll sit and collect some dust on the collection shelf. All right. Um, I, oh, boy. And, and I'm going to get some grief from this. One of my subscribers, and I believe he also has a channel, sent me um, a couple of packs of Zap Packs. And I thought they were pretty cool. They were uh, video game parody cards. And uh, I, I really liked them. Now, I, I, I checked them out on eBay. And for some reason, they, they seem to be going for, for quite a bit of money. Sorry, that top came off there. Um, and that was my fault. It wasn't actually shipped to me. These came, again, from the auction. Um, two complete boxes of Zap Packs. Um, I, I think all in for both of these boxes was less than 25 bucks for both boxes. So I thought, uh, that is a great deal. No, nobody but me bid on these, um, which, which may tell you they're, they're not super popular. But uh, they even still have the auction sticker on there. Um, but I picked them up for, I thought, a really good price. So um, one is going in my collection, the box that uh, was ripped when I when I opened it. Um, I'm selling these by the pack on my eBay store. If you want a couple packs, I have them for a really good price. Um, you know, I don't upcharge a whole bunch on my eBay store. Again, we'll, we'll talk about why here a little later. But... Um, yeah, a, a really good deal. Two complete boxes of Zap Packs and uh, another welcome addition to my collection. So I, I have four of these. I didn't bring four over, um, but uh, Micro Icons, and they're the little rubber squishy figures, a, a lot like, um, yeah, you know, I don't know if uh, cheap toys, are, they're kind of hard plastic. Maybe the the other Garbage Pail Kids, I, I forget the exact name, they're, they're kind of squishy icons. What's neat is, is they have all kinds of cool little concepts. They've got bikers and kung fu guys and, and soldiers and commandos and punks and Mexican wrestlers. Uh, just just a really cool little box set. Now I got four of these. They were they were less than ten bucks a box each. I think I paid eight uh, bucks a box a piece. And so I put them on uh, three of them on my eBay store. One of these is is sealed in my collection. Um, they're all still factory sealed, but I, I thought it was kind of neat and uh, something unique, uh, something that at least I didn't see, and, and now that I own them, I, I see them all the time, but uh, you know, that always happens. You buy something, and then you start to look for it, you notice it, but uh, I, I thought the price was right on those, so that's pretty cool. If you want to own one of those, we'll, we'll talk a little later about how you can do that. So this was the the only thing that I, I, I pretty much paid market value for, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And uh, is this the one that has Keanu Reeves in it? Um, I, I don't remember. But but regardless, 1992 Tops Columbia Pictures. Um, premium uh, quality movie cards for mature audiences, it says. Um, I, I don't think there's anything in here like autographs. I, I really didn't research it. Um, I do like boxes of the horror genre. 
it's still factory sealed it's in really nice condition but i paid right at market value with the auction surcharge on this um i believe it was ah i want to say like 48 dollars or 50 dollars all in with the uh the surcharge from the auction and that's about what they go for on ebay 52 55 dollars uh, regardless, uh, you know, I didn't really buy this to flip it. Um, you know, this is something I bought to add to my collection because it's a box I don't have and, and it's in really nice condition. Yeah, yeah, another welcome addition to the collection. All right, what else we got here? Oh, I'm going to grab this. So I got a case of these, and no, I'm not going to bring the whole case over. Uh, right now I'm sitting on a full case of Bill and Ted's, a full case of Toxic High, the UK packs and a full case of pro set superstars um and and i bought these for a a really really good price per box um and i'm i i think i'm the lowest price per box on ebay right now uh so yeah I, you know they are highly collectible cards i i have a a case at a you know what they call it an antique mall it's like a vintage mall it's the size of like three football fields um, it's called the Brass Armadillo here. I know they're they're kind of a national chain. And I've had that case for about six months. And, and they have lots of non-sport in there, loose packs and boxes. And, and I have a few of these in there. Um, I've actually sold a few boxes and, and quite a number of packs. Uh, you know, if you're from the 90s, this is a nostalgic trading card box to own. Very inexpensive and and they're they're quite a bit of fun to open up uh i you know same with the the toxic high and bill and ted's i actually opened up two boxes of bill and ted's myself uh just to build a set and i and i know it's worth <laughs> you know absolutely nothing but hey it, it is what it is um pro set superstars music cards uh, i believe this is series one they did have a series two uh but a nice little welcome addition to my collection just a few bucks a box on that um, let's move on to um, Topps Tattoons. Um, there, there was two boxes of this on the auction, and and I bid on one. And uh, so here is my my aha moment, maybe. And and I am not saying that any shenanigans. Again, auction sticker on that. Any shenanigans happened with this auction. So please don't don't. Uh, put a comment of, of hate in this video but there was two of these boxes um, both were factory sealed I only bid on one um, I'm kind of a sucker for cute little tattoos or monster tattoos it's kind of my thing I know it's it's a little doofy but it, it's who I am so I bid on this and, and I bid 20 bucks I, I think they go 25 bucks on eBay now my bid was up to $20 and then the other box on there, which was not as nice as this, but still factory sealed. Um, I didn't bid on at all. Now, this box got bid all the way up to $19. So I ended up paying $20 for the box plus the auction surcharge. And I think these things are like $25 bucks on, on eBay. But the other box didn't get bid on at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go back in and just put a dollar on the other box, and I really should have because it didn't sell, uh, at least per my auction notes. But but funny enough, a, a few of my auction items all got bid up to within a dollar of my maximum auction uh, listings. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, an auction's an auction. It, it happens. It happens on eBay. Um, I, I'm not saying there was any shill bidding happening, but uh, for a few items, it, it just, they, they really did get bid up quite a bit um, for something that, that my thought probably shouldn't have happened. And, and number two, the second one never even got bid on. So anyway, uh, I own it. It's it's a wonderful addition to my collection. Um, even if I wanted to sell it, I couldn't. I'd never get my money out of this, uh, nor would I. Um, adorable box, uh, tops, tattoos, easy on, easy off tattoos. I believe this is from the 90s. Yeah, 1993 tops. Um, still a really welcome addition to my collection. All right. Uh, so this is really cool now. This is on my eBay store, and it's got a bunch of watchers. And, and sometimes when items get a bunch of watchers, people watch it uh, because they think that you, you've overpriced an item. And this is the highest-costing box on eBay. 
and 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 I put a big description in there because I, I felt like I had to. I own. I I'm looking over at my card shelf. One, two, three. I own three sealed boxes of this in in one box that I opened up. And the reason I opened the box is I wanted to see if I had Series 1 or Series 2. Series 1 for Bathroom Buddies has plastic packs. It's a test set, so it has less cards. Uh, it was only released in Australia, New York, and Canada. And then it was popular, so they, they came out with uh, the second print run of this, which is the foil packs of cards. It's a bigger set, and uh, uh, it's done by Tom Bunk, Tom Bunk Art. Um, this is a great set. It is a popular set. People do like to collect this. However, um, I, I, I saw this when I bid on it, and I picked this up for right around $30. Um, on the back is a code on the box, and if you research the code, you're going to see that um, here is, is where it is for the difference. The 01 is the actual test set. Uh, done 1996 tops bathroom buddies by Tom Bunk, um, but the code on the back of the box, the zero one, means it is the test set. I did as much research as I could through Worth Point and in eBay. There are no zero ones out on eBay, and if you're a collector of non-sport card, and, and and I truly am a collector, I'm, I'm, I kind of go full nerd on this stuff. This is a really difficult box to come by. Uh, because of the print run of this there was not a ton of the test set done now for you gpk fans out there garbage pail kid fans um original series one was done the same way it was a test set released in new york in canada the test set uh package colors are a little bit more rich of a pink maybe a darker pink um you you can kind of go full nerd into that very very difficult with the exception of the box code to tell if it is a test set pack um, there is some unique cutting to those cards as well that is the rumor at least um, i am not full nerd on series one gpk because uh, you know even when i got back into gpk uh, a box of os1 was 500 700 back in the early 2000s and, and to me back then that was fifteen thousand dollars today so um, I didn't really get into that, but uh, I, I was pretty pleased to find this box. Now, this is, is several hundred dollars on eBay. Um, will it ever sell? I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I know this is a popular set. I know this is a very, very hard-to-come-by box. Uh, for those of you out there that have boxes, pull the code. Um, you know, I could run over to my shelf and, gr and grab another one. I, I won't, but your code will probably say zero two if you got a zero one box then then let me know maybe it's more common than i think but uh regardless came directly from the rock santoser collection um i thought it was a great deal and uh this is a a item in my collection but hopefully not for long <laughs> as as it is out there on the ebay store all right um so i picked up a couple boxes i had them shipped uh from the uk this one's opened up i'm, I'm selling them by the pack um on my ebay store and this is just the super mario cards they they are great cards i got tons of foil in them um you know super mario is uh really really popular and trendy um so i picked up a couple of these because they are quickly selling out on ebay um so and, and they were shipped and they're fine um done by the panini group um, this one came from, I don't remember if it came from the UK or Australia or something like that. Uh, shipping was free. Um, the card box was, was with the exchange, a, a little bit spendy and, and they are a little bit spendy, but, uh, I have one seal for my collection and, and a few of these, uh, selling by the pack on eBay. Um, so, so why do I sell by the pack than the box? You know, it's just easier um, for, for people to say, hey, you know, I can go spend six bucks on a pack rather than, you know, $115 on, on a box. So there's my thought process with that. Could be right, could be wrong. Um, I've sold a couple, I think three already on this. Uh, and, it's, and it's a really cute set. So welcome edition. Um, all right. Uh, uh, so sh trading cards, Milo did a video. Um, yeah, I love Milo. He he's a good dude. And in the video, they opened up a pack of Sleepaway Camp uh, 2 and 3. And, of course, uh, Friday the 13th, 2 and 3 is. But they can't call it that. So it's called Sleepaway Camp. Uh, done by Fright Rags. 
inside a box, you get a sketch card, possibly a plate card, and an autograph by one of the original characters in Friday the 13th, number two or number three. Uh, this one's factory sealed. I will never open it. It is a very welcome addition to my collection. Um, I absolutely love the box art. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the set. I was, I was never really a Friday the 13th fan. I guess I'm, I'm kind of more of a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of fan. But uh, still, it, it was a good price. Um, I, you know, I know they always sell out of these boxes eventually on Fright Rags. Um, so I, my thought process with Fright Rags is, is, you know, when you buy the packs, and the packs only, uh, the your investment is usually pretty sound when you buy the sets is is where you can lose money because they're known to re-release re-release the sets i think they're on set number three or four of um, night of the living dead and they, and they almost look alike but uh, as far as the wax packs paper packs go um at least historically you never go wrong so if you're you're someone you just want to buy it and then sell it eventually you can do that if you're a collector like me i, I always like oh yeah that's worth you know three hundred dollars now it's like the garbage pail kids universal monster type boxes so really welcome addition to my collection adorable box there sleepaway camp two and three all right you have heard me say this so many times I am a monster Stargate Atlantis set. Now, I, I love Stargate the movie. Uh, I like Stargate SG-1. I, I have the entire box set. I'm, I'm looking there on the, the movie shelf. Um, let me see. I, I might be able to... No, I'm not going to turn the camera. It's, it's, but regardless, it's, it's up there. Now, Stargate Atlantis, um, I, I never caught it when it originally released. I did catch it on DVD many, many years ago. Then I bought all, I think there's like seven, six, five seasons. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five seasons. Uh, but this is a great, great television show. I am a sci-fi uh, nut. I, I really enjoy sci-fi movies, sci-fi television shows. Um, I thought the characters were well done. Uh, the enemies, the wraith were awesome. Um, I really liked, you know, a new world, new this, new, new that. And, and the concept of this was really cool. So great set. Um, this came from the auction. And this is where I got into a battle. I, I think you know, all in was like one hundred and forty-four dollars with auction fees. I paid for this box, twenty-four packs, really small pack, uh, really small box. So why did I do this? Um, number one, you never see these on eBay. There are just a few boxes, and they're like a thousand dollars a piece. The reason why these are so popular and, and Rittenhouse does such a good idea their Rittenhouse archives does such a good idea and it is a Rittenhouse archives there is in each box you get two autograph cards and two costume cards for 24 packs two autograph and two costume cards that that's kind of a big deal and uh Typically, you're going to get your money out of this if you pull a highly sought-after autograph or a, a good costume card. You know, you pull a costume of the Wraith, and they're four or five hundred bucks on eBay. So my my thought process with this is, I, I really love the box, but I am going to put it on the eBay store because it's something that should drive interest. People should read about it. Like, there's there's not a lot of these out there. But I put it at a price where, you know, it's 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 kind of like you you would really have to pay me, and it's more than double what what I paid for it. And and, and I'm not doing that to be a jerk. Um, I, I I really am doing this because I love this box of cards. But when I was buying in the auction, my my thought process was I was going to get one thing that I really really wanted, which was the Beetlejuice. And I ended up getting two or three, and what I'm trying to do, and the whole premise of the eBay store is, um, I'm selling things so I can afford to buy the things that I want without utilizing family money. And I don't want any of you guys to worry out there, I'm not in any financial turmoil, uh, but... Uh, 
I, I do, going back through my eBay history, my auction purchases, my purchases local, uh, my purchases with uh, my, my guy in Wisconsin, and, and other people on the Facebook groups, you know, all in, I am tens of thousands of dollars in trading card purchases. And, 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 and again, I, I, I sell a lot of that is sport and I, you know, I don't, I know I don't show a, a ton of sport on my channel because I, I sell it all. Um, it's, it's always vintage. Um, it's from junk wax down through the sixties on singles cards or fifties even. Um, and, and I clear that stuff out. Uh, so that is all just, just sales. It, it's hard for me to sell garbage pail kids. I love them all. It's hard for me to sell non-sport cards. I, I really do love non-sport cards. It's my passion, but selling these on eBay, allow me an opportunity to buy something that I really want. You know, I never would have spent $125 or whatever that is on that box of cards had I have not had a significant balance in my uh, business account from my eBay sales. And, and my thought process is, uh, you know, as I liquidate some things and, and do some other things, there are a few items that are very, very expensive. Uh, here's, here's a wonderful case in point. Um, I would love to have the original, original box of Street Fighter, not the remake, the original box of Street Fighter trading cards. And for those of you that know, it is a super expensive set. So what I'm kind of doing is, is just making a little bit of money. And, and when I get to the point where I'm ready to pull the trigger, or I win an auction, I can finally afford that box and, and not worry about putting a thousand dollar or eight hundred dollar uh, charge on my credit card and then having to pay that off next month. So there's my uh, thoughts around my, my eBay store. Just a few other items, and then we'll get into some other things. Um, so I bought those uh, sets. Uh, those sets will be listed this weekend and next weekend on eBay, uh, my eBay store. I, I, I really am going to give you guys some great deals out there if you're interested. But uh, uh, a couple of sets that I did not have complete sets, which now complete my Star Wars run from 77. Uh, the yellow and the orange. Uh, the orange, especially the first card, is, is going to take maybe some replacement. I think that is excellent or less. Um, got some rounded corners on a few of those cards, but the majority of them are pretty good. Sticker sets are in there. Uh, the yellow is, is actually a, a, a pretty good set. I would say excellent plus. Um, it doesn't need to be mint. Uh, this is uh, something I remember fondly buying. Um, in the 80s, you could still get the trading card packs. And then, of course, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Uh, very nostalgic for me, so welcome addition to my collection. These are the only two sets that I'm saving out of all that. Uh, the rest of those I'm going to liquidate and uh, put some really nice prices out there for you guys. All right, uh, let's uh, let's take a look. I, in the second part of this video, for, for those of you that are just a big giant trading card fans and, and you're like, hey, Retro, I don't care about your eBay store or, or what you do. I understand. So, but uh, I am going to pull this up. So we're we're going to talk about uh, my store. So first things first, I'll, I'll go to my my well. Let's let's talk performance first. So I'm going to kind of see if I can get that for you in in uh, camera. Okay. Uh, so the, these are my sales. Now I I started my store in October. And in fact, October 11th, and and I had to go from September 1 to December. But but you'll see when I started it. So in 58 days, my my total sales. Uh, you know, right around $7,540.88. That may sound bad for some of you. That may sound good for some of you. What I want you guys to keep in mind is uh, this is not all mine. <laughs> so first things first, eBay takes out their cut, uh, taxes, and then they take out selling costs, okay? And then you have this total over here in blue, which is 5400 Now, you don't get to keep $5,400 either because, you know, whether you ship for free or you charge for shipping, you know, that's not your money. You, you have to pay it to the U.S. Postal Service. So kind of think everything that gets sold, average shipping costs for UPS ground is 
four to six dollars. Uh, some are you know ten, eleven, depending if you buy a whole box of cards. Uh, so I've sold 347 items, 58 days, uh, average sale is 21.73. It kind of talks about what my, my sales are. Um, a lot of trading card singles, that's a majority of my sales. And then I've got packs, boxes, uh, sealed trading card boxes, and then just collectibles. So I've got some magazines and some other things in there. Uh, some things that I thought were pretty cool. So this is truly going to when I started this. So it, it says from October 6th to October 12th. I, I actually started on October 11th, uh, but it gives you a week-by-week -week comparison. Um, this is when it started. And these are your total sales. It goes 500000 and top is, is 1500 So first week, second week, third week, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And we're getting close to our, our full month. This really goes down here and talks about selling costs, 1674.47. Um, it is 22.2% of your total sales. So I, I found that eBay is, is typically charging uh, right around between 20 and, and, and 25%. And, and, and I have a store and that is my charge. Now these are items that I sold. You know, I liquidated a box of, because I had four of OS3 packs. I, you know, I've sold so many unique things, some sport things. It just goes on for pages and pages. Um, had a couple plates that it sold here and there, some GPK items I had doubles of, so on and so forth. So lots of stuff has, has gone in and out of my collection. Um, I, I think this has been a, a fun experience. And, and again, the whole purpose of this was not for me to get out of collecting because that's never going to happen. This is my hobby. I absolutely love my hobby. The whole purpose of this was for me to sell duplicates, um, sell some things that, that I don't look at. They sit in a vault. I don't care about um, singles or packs, uh, those types of things, and uh, make some income that is not family income that I can that I can utilize to to buy what I want to buy. Um, so these are my categories. The store is nostalgia trading cards, sport and non-sport on eBay. It's it's all together, so there's no spaces. So it's just, just nostalgia trading cards, all one word. Um, very excited about my feedback. I got good feedback. Um, you know, I don't overcharge people for shipping. I combine shipping. I do shipping refunds. Um, I'm a collector. I know how to pack all this stuff. But my categories are non-sport, sport trading cards, which I don't have a whole lot of, garbage pail kids, and other collectibles. Um, it's been quite a bit of a fun experience. Um, I don't know if I can get to what I'm what I'm selling. Uh, oh, that's my watch list. Hey, you guys want to check out my watch list? Uh, Monster Magic trading cards uh, from the 60s. That's a good deal. And a bunch of Mike Schmidt cards I don't have. <laughs> that's that's my watch list. That's that's it. That's all I got. Well, I, and I and I ordered some uh, BBC tab trading card things. But uh, you get a a look at at what I buy. Um, so 31 days of sales. Let's see if I can get. Uh, I don't know. Does it let me know what I'm selling to you guys? How does Great listing drafts. Okay, I've got 235 active listings. Now, my store is a basic store. Um, it's uh, 250 items listed for free per month. Um, I, I will tell you, I don't even get anywhere near 250 items. I think my second month I got close at like 220. But it is a ton of work. Uh, it is a heck of an investment. But, you know, I've got all kinds of cool stuff. I've, I've got the Toxic High, as, as I mentioned up here. Um, I got some really cool early 80s football wax packs, guaranteed seal, GPK, a lot of junk wax. Um, I liquidated about 30 Gilligan's Islands cards, and, and those went really well. The Smurf packs, Mad Magazine, I mean, you name it. I got Empire Strikes Back. I even got some funky things. Like I found I had eight NES hard shell clam cover, clamshell covers. Um, and I think I do a pretty good job when, when I price these. Uh, here's some, I can't believe no one's bought any of this. Man, I, I loved sport flicks so, so much when I was a, a kid. 
And I got this box of sport flicks, 89 sport flicks, and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and I priced them a dollar fifty a piece, and then you know if you buy three or more, they're a dollar forty three. What a great deal! And and no one is buying my sport flicks. So go out there and buy my junk wax baseball, everybody. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, I, I I just thought I did a, a pretty good job pricing stuff out, and and I wanted to take just a, a few occurrences here and and maybe show you guys. Now th there are a few things that I have priced that. I was very apprehensive or, or on the fence to, to sell them and it was hard for me to list them and, and when I did that I I priced them accordingly but here's a for instance uh, I got a whole box of 10th series I figure I'd sell them by the pack um, you know I invested in a photo box so that's where the photo box photos come from front and back and then pictures um, buy one at 695 buy two at 681 buy three at 667 I think the closest to person to me on eBay selling these things that's not in a lot deal where you can buy four or five or ten um, is like seven or eight bucks. So I, I, I thought I did pretty good pricing these. The prices are based off of what I spent on the box as well, which is, is kind of unique and, and, and a neat way to do it. it again, I'm, I'm not doing this to get rich by any means. Um, I'm just doing this to to support my habit, to my collecting habit. All right, so that is my eBay store. Um, in a nutshell, I, I wanted to give you guys kind of an overview. Um, so if this is something that you're thinking about doing, I do highly recommend that you do a store. Um, it's only seven or eight bucks a month. Um, and you get it back because they let you buy supplies. And supplies are so important, which is the, the last part here. Um, I, I, maybe I should just unhook this and, and take you over. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to do that. So give me a second here. Um, so I d undid the microphone. So if I, if I sound funny, um, I, I apologize. So let's kind of go over here. And as you can see, my, my collection shelf is just an absolute mess. It's, it's a mess. Uh, you know, packs and boxes and everything. But uh, all right, so over here is is what I did for um, my supplies. Uh, so I, I had to invest in quite a bit uh, in the padded bags, um, envelopes, plain white envelopes for single cards, um, boxes for the people who buy packs, uh, bigger envelopes, smaller envelopes, um, bubble tape, and I mean, everything you could pretty much think of. Um, up here, I got boxes and boxes. There's Bobby V's poster. Yeah, that's so, so cool. So, uh, VKQ Interests and Adventures. I told you I was going to frame that. I totally did. Um, so, that is is essentially what, what I did. And then, you know, as you sell stuff, you want to make sure, you know, I've got to pick a card, OS2. Uh, you want to make sure things are, are basically ready and available for you. So, uh, that's essentially what I did. Um, the other investments, there's there's all these sets. Uh, the other investment truly is um, you need to invest in a thermal printer, okay? Because uh, you'll get a small discount for eBay shipping and it, it sure makes your life a lot easier. And then of course, um, just over here, and, and they're all, I, I moved all the stuff I was working on, but uh, a postage scale is so, so important. Uh, because you want to weigh your packages um, correctly. So, yeah, that, that is uh, pretty much it for the eBay store. Let me kind of put you back here, and there we go. All right, so I, I put you back in for the camera there. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I, I hope you guys got a, a nice insight. I, I don't want you to think this was a video about any type of clout, because it's, it's definitely not about that it was all about just uh showing you the work that goes in um the investment that goes in you know i should i guess tell you my investment was right around about 1100 it was 1180 some dollars that was shipping the thermal printer for postage um the scale uh the bags the boxes the tape um, all of that stuff, the photo box, um, 
that was my initial investment to sell on eBay. And uh, from there is, is just um, selling stuff. So uh, my thought process, and, and I reached out to people like Robert Cash. Robert's been selling on eBay for years. And, and it turns out it's probably a really good idea to have a uh, LLC. So I reached out to an attorney and, and I did an LLC. So I'm Nostalgia Trading Cards LLC in Nebraska. And, uh, and, and, and I did all this work. Um, then I reached out to my accountant. So yes, we have an accountant that does our taxes every year, but uh, um, reached out to my accountant and talked about deductions and this upfront investment. So if you're gonna do this and, and you're gonna actually do this for any length of time, um, I, I highly recommend that you do your research, uh, be ready to go. There are great videos out there. I've learned a ton on how to ship cards, how to package cards. Uh, the most useful video uh, are, are ones how to list cards and list them correctly, take good pictures, uh, and, and to price accordingly. Um, and the second one was a video that says, if you're like me, you order a lot of stuff, save all those boxes, save all that packing material, all that stuff that normally you know you would just throw away as it came in. That is all important stuff to keep, whether you're cutting down cardboard to, to shift or you're reusing boxes or bubble tape or you know these, these big giant uh, card sleeves because th these can get expensive. Um, you know, I went all out and I bought cases of graded card sleeves and penny sleeves and top loaders and semi-rigid and and slide boxes and, and all that stuff went in and I, I didn't really need to do that. Uh, so that was kind of money I don't think was well spent. But anyway, um, I digress. I'm, I'm getting too deep in this for you guys. But I, I really hope you enjoyed some insight into this. Um, Again, not a clout video, not a video saying, hey, uh, go to my eBay store and, and, and buy all my stuff. That is not what this is about. This is, is truly my education provided through my trials and, and a lot of errors and mishaps. Um, one thing I will tell you is, is I make a lot of trips to the post office. I'm at the post office every single morning, Monday through Saturday. Um, so be prepared for that. I spend a lot of time listing and shipping. Um, I probably do, I don't want to exaggerate for you, I spend no less than 10 to 15 hours a week right in that time frame down in my office, listing, picturing, packing. I mean, throughout the week, that is, this is like a part-time job. Uh, so if your time is more valuable to you just being a collector, and, and you wanna be a casual seller, you get a great card, you wanna flip it for some profit, yeah, that's awesome, go go right ahead. Uh, but if you wanna get into this and, and deep dive into it, which I decided to do, um, just be prepared for, for some work. And, and there's my thought process for all this. Uh, take it for what it's will, uh, what, what it's worth, you know, I'm definitely not a professional, so I am I am not going to say that this is all right or wrong. It's just basically how I feel. All right, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Always appreciate you. Hit me up in the comment section if you have questions on things. Um, I will always reach back out to you. For those of you guys that are expecting a Retro Hero sign card, I, I did finish them. Um, I even ordered a special pin for you. So you got gold leaf signatures. Um, I actually think by so many of you requested sign cards that uh, by me signing these, I, I think I devalued the card. <laughs> But hey, I was I was pretty pleased with the uh, eight to twelve messages I got saying you guys wanted a card that will go out next week. Um, I always take some time off of my my main employer <laughs> before Christmas, so um, those cards will go out. And I do know that I still have a shoe to give away. I haven't forgot about you guys. You guys love the giveaways. Um, we're going to do a holiday special giveaway. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to run over to 
the, the collection shelf and I'm going to grab a collector's box and we're going to open it up and give away uh, a hit from the box uh, to some lucky person. We may, may, probably not, but may do a live stream. <laughs> I, I hate live streams. I got to be able to edit. All right, that's it. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me. Take care. Talk to you again soon. Bye.